KMI, KMI, KMI. This is Spirit of London, Spirit of London. Roger. This is Spirit of London, Golf Bravo, Foxtrot Tango, standing by. My name is Stan Delaplane. I came aboard this new cruise ship to write some stories about what cruising is like. And these are some of the things that happened to me and the places I saw and some of the things I wrote about. Nothing like riding ships at sea, and I've been on all kinds of them. If you get on the American ships, everybody's your pal, and the story really isn't working for you. He's writing a book on the side. That's why you went to sea. And then the Italian ships, it's all spaghetti and eat pagliacci. And the French ships, you have a feeling the captain's down there auditioning the crepes to see if they're thin enough and tasting the soup. But on the British ships, it's all service. Well, from the, the day that um, the passenger walks onto the ship, comes along the gangway, and the first person that uh, he or she is going to see when embarking is the cruise director or maybe one of the cruise staff. He's going to have the information. If they have a question, then they're going to turn to the cruise director and say, can you tell me where this is, where that is, what kind of bands, how many cabaret acts, all this kind of thing. They're going to ask the cruise director. So he's the sort of the go-between the crew and the passengers is the man that is uh, just there all the time if he's doing his job. <laughs> and the captain gives two parties this evening. He will welcome you over the door personally. I will introduce you to the captain and then you come in and you have uh, some drinks before going down to dinner. Mr. and Mrs. Holliman. Mr. and Mrs. Faderman. Mr. and Mrs. Rick. Janet and Ellen Crawford. A purser must have very broad shoulders, must have a very keen sense of humour, be tactful, uh, be very simpatico, and able to assess people, uh, their needs. A purser is, is a hotel manager afloat, he, but his, his hotel moves. He is responsible for the money, for the correct documentation, for the luggage, for the service, the preparation of food, service in public rooms, in cabins, and the laundry, the linen, and the efficient operation of the hotel side of the department, and the discipline, welfare, and turnout of his men. Ah, oh, thank you. And let's start the day with a good morning stretch. You needn't look elegant. Oh, doesn't that feel good? And if you yawn, so much the better, because you're exercising your jaws. OK? <laughs> and for the first few days, we'll call it get fit before we keep fit. Now, if you put your fingertips where your waistlines used to be or should be, and let's go twisting. One, two, three, four, back. One, two, three, four, return. As you know, the stomach is the best, is the best part of our anatomy, which we've got to look after. And once we look, if we look after this and keep it happy, uh, the rest of the body is happy, and I hope we can keep the passengers happy. We can pick our food from anywhere we like. The world's your larder. You can pick wherever you want from. We have um, an availability list from all from all ports of uh, fresh fruit, fresh fish, meats. We see which is the best. Whatever they supply us has got to be the best. If it isn't, it's, it's turned back. As the days go along, I'd say about five days out, you're getting to know everybody and they fall into categories. You know, there's the walkers, and then there's the dressers, and then you have the swimmers, and you have the eaters, of course. But the thing about a ship, 
on a cruise is that you're in a different country. You're in the tropics, and it's warm. Up home, it's cold. And you're doing things that you wouldn't do at home. Uh, you're playing shuffleboard. You don't do that in your backyard. You know, you don't even play horseshoes. Maybe you got a horseshoe pit out there, but you don't do it. Of course, there's some people who just spend the whole day getting ready for the night. Well, this is Macy's. You buy all the things you might need for shipboard life here, though. Swimming suits, evening dress, razor blades, souvenirs, and, of course, liquor for your cabin. A ship at sea is like a free port. That is, if you are, you are not charged for the taxes and duties, which will be locked into the things you buy ashore. So a ship is a pretty good place to buy things. And you have those serious drinkers who are up there the minute the bar opens, and they close it up. One morning and overnight you've reached tropic waters. There ahead of you is green Mexico, the banana coast, Manzanillo, Mexico. I guess the last of the untouched ports. This is what it, uh, Acapulco used to be. You can sort of smell Mexico. There's the fish boats and the fruit, the strange tropical fruits like sapote and chiramoya and jicamas. And if you walk into the Indian market, an Indian woman will whip you up a frothy chocolate with cinnamon that's exactly like Cortez described from the court of Montezuma in his letters to the Spanish king. Yo no soy marinero, por ti seré, por ti seré, por ti seré. Vamos ahí, mi negro. Despacito. Puerto Vallarta is Manzanillo advanced about 20 years. If you're real hip, you call it PV or Vallarta. It jumped up pretty fast a few years ago when uh, Liz and Dick came down here. Dick Burton, the sexy Welshman, and his latest wife, Elizabeth Taylor. And they made the night of the iguana. And I guess everybody in the town was a part of that thing. Uh, that's what people talk to me about. As soon as I arrive in town, they say, oh, you came down here to write about Liz and Dick. But the cobblestone streets are still here, and the women still wash their clothes in the stream.
You want to throw a little cocktail party and pay off all those people who invited you to their cocktail parties? Well, here's the way you do it. There are about a half a dozen or more little private party rooms in the spirit of London. There's a party being given right here. The ship furnishes you the bartender and furnishes you a waiter, and the canapes are made by the chef for you, and they're, they're quite reasonable. They put in enough liquor for everybody, and you have only pay for what they drink. You don't have to buy a whole bunch of bottles. You see, this is the way it's beginning to work for you on a cruise ship, say, after three, four, five days. Now you've, you've invited the people you like, and you've snubbed the people you don't like. Be sure to ask the captain. He asks you to his cocktail party. The uh, dinner hour probably is the most exciting uh, meal of the day. Uh, this is when the spirit of London turns on all of their best food and all of their best things, the 52 curries and all of the, uh, the stuff that goes with this, with the great desserts and the, uh, the great wine list and so on. And this is when people dress up. This is when you put on the, uh, the, the, the dinner squares with the, the black bow tie or you wear something else. And you do the best you can to look good and to eat well. And it's the time before the evening starts with the cabaret and the, the rest of the evening where you stay up till midnight and then walk out on the back of the ship and watch that wake go by and the moon come up and you're in tropic waters and you're living. There are a lot of professional entertainers on these ships when you're cruising, but you know what I like, uh, the crew talent night. It's a lot of fun. Mr. Tommy Kavner! Tommy brings me my drinks in the Greenwich room and he does a mean Irish jig. call a Scottish reel. And that's the first officer there. I didn't even know he could dance. I came down here a long time ago. I was on a coffee ship, and seamanship has changed a lot. Uh, there was no dock in those days in Mazatlan. We used to anchor offshore. Uh, I used to uh, take the depths myself by dropping a piece of lead in the water, but now the captain knows exactly how deep it is, and as you can see, he's docking this ship here a, a good deal like you'd park a car, except you can't make too many mistakes with a 17,000-ton yacht. The British are proud of their seamanship. They're an island race, sailed the seas, and actually commanded them for many, many years. And the captain here is Royal Navy Reserve. That's why the Spirit of London flies the Blue Ensign, which tells you the captain is Royal Navy. Actually, he's uh, doing it with better equipment than the ship I sailed on with the captain who was known as the Beau Brummel of the Pacific but it's more or less the same thing. You've got to take a great big ship and you've got to lay it right alongside a dock without bumping anything. Well, I got a big thing on Mazatlan. It was my first foreign port. 
I came here, I was an 18-year-old cadet on a merchant ship. And to me, this was Paris. Must have been a horrible time, but really, for me, it was the greatest thing I'd ever had. They say something about Mexico. They say, once the dust of Mexico has settled on your heart, you will find peace and know their land. When we came into port, it was a big thing. Everybody came down to the docks. They came aboard, and they got roaring drunk. And it was my job to take their pistols away from them at the gangway, because when they got excited, they'd shoot through the overhead. So everybody had to check their pistols, and I was the guy who took the pistols. <laughs> but the same palm trees were here, and the same lagoon. And otherwise, it looks just about the same way I remembered Mazatlan. There was a little cantina on the corner. That's gone. And the hotel here was the Belmar, where I used to stay. They had uh, a couple of bow constrictors used to come up and down the stairs. Uh, to catch mice, and it was kind of an experience when you walked upstairs to your room and a boa constrictor came slithering down at you. The boa constrictors are gone, by the way. I went over and asked the bellboy today, and I said, what happened to the serpents? Que pasado con los serpientes? He said, senor, they died. I thought they die. He said, they fell out the window. How does a boa constrictor fall out of a window? I, I don't know. Maybe he was drunk. Anyway, they fell out the window, the bow constrictors are gone, the cantina is gone. And I don't know whatever happened to that 18-year-old boy who used to walk down the streets with a cap on his back of his head. Well, the fun thing is when you get up in the morning and it's all nice and warm, you just get in your bathing suit and you go down to the pool and you, when the waves are going the right way and the boat's going the right way, the waves just splash all over the pool, and it feels like you're, you can body surf in this pool. And then, after you get sort of tired of swimming, and it's not tea time or bingo time, <coughs> you, like, go and get all dried off, and go back to your cabin, get dressed, and then go play shuffleboard, or quoits. I didn't know how to play, but just by watching everybody, I learned, and asking people the rules, and stuff like that. And then it's, after you usually played a couple games, it's almost tea time. Four o'clock, eight bells to the ship's clock, and that's the time you take tea. Tea is as British as uh, the King's Road in Chelsea, and when I'm on a British ship, I drink tea, and I spent a year in London, I drank tea every day. It always has a lot of pastry along with it, which I like, and actually tea grows on you. Acapulco isn't like it was when I first came there, but I think it's probably improved and uh, it's a better town. I don't know whether I have or not, but I went right up to the Acapulco Princess. The manager up there is Raul Sanchez. And he came down to see me in the bar. Raul got me married in Mexico City when he ran a hotel with only 32 rooms. And he said, I remember I used to give you the room 212 in the back, so where it was quiet. And he said, I remember when you got married there. And I remember it too. He said, uh, all the documents you need, senor, he said, is a blood test. And he said, you don't have to go and take it. He said, I'm going to send two bellboys to take it for you. Ojos de papel volando, negrita de mis pesares Ojos de papel volando, a todos diles que sí Pero no les digas cuándo, así me dijiste a mí Por eso vivo penando
es la mineira que la quiero ver aquí Con su rebozo de seda que le traje de ti. Cuando me traes a mi negra que la quiero ver aquí Con su rebozo de seda que le traje de tepí The big thing about cruise ships is that every night is a party night. There are two cabarets that's uh, what the British call nightclubs on the spirit of London. There's continuous entertainment of every kind and then there's dancing that goes on until the last couple calls it quits. Whether you're cruising down here to Mexico in the winter or you're cruising up to Alaska in the summer. strange reason the British have got a reputation in America of being a stuffy race. Uh, uh, I don't think this is true. Uh, you know, in recent years, London has acquired a great reputation as a swinging city. And we've got a swinging city right here.